was launched on 25th of December or Ariane 5 rocket from Genia Space Center and it, NASA released its full color image on 12th of July. Let's look at the images. You can see such beautiful images were released. Stephen Squinted, Smax 073, Southern Ring Nebula. Now over here in the left side you see the Hubble image and on the right side you see the James image. A lot of difference, right? A lot of difference. We can see so many galaxies over there which we are not able to see over here, right? It's because, can anybody, does anybody know why is it so? Like what was the basic thing that changed in James as compared to the Hubble? Obviously it was built 30 years back, later so it's like better. But what was the basic thing that changed? Yes, yes, yes. That's right. James looked, uh, looks into the universe through infrared spectrum. So an infrared peers through the clouds and dust. So we can see a lot better picture over here as compared to the left side. Here also, because its mirror is very large, resolution is very sharp. So we are able to see much better image. You can see it for yourself that there is a lot of change in the two images. This one especially my favorite. See, uh, here the thing that do pillar kind of things that you see, it's basically cloud and dust, right? And over there you can see the stars that were behind that dust. Even those stars are visible because infrared peers through all of that. And we are able to see those stars as well. So that is the beauty of James Webb. Why so much of difference, like I said. So, uh, First point is that James looks to, uh, at, um, uh, at the universe with infrared thing and then Hubble uses uh, ultraviolet and optical wavelengths mostly and uh, Webb's mirror is much larger than Hubble's mirror and uh, Hubble orbits around the earth at 570 kilometers whereas uh, the James uh, revolves around the Earth at L2 Lagrange point, which is 1.5 kilometers away. Now here in this comparison, you can see the Hubble over here and Webb somewhere over there. So that is the difference. And Hubble, uh, I mean, the James Webb is as big as a tennis court. It is a really big thing. Now over there, you can see uh, some details written. And uh, in that you see the mass of Hubble is 6200 kgs whereas the mass of, uh, sorry, the mass of James is 6200 kgs and the mass of Hubble is just double of it, right? Although James is a much bigger uh, telescope, its mass is less, thing number one. Thing number two is, look at its operating temperature, it's minus 230 degrees Celsius which is like not exactly uh, the absolute zero, but something near to that, right? Why is that so? Why its operating temperature is so less? Anybody? Yeah, but we are trying to maintain the temperature of that at minus 230 degrees Celsius and uh, Hubble's one, we couldn't get that there is an objective behind that temperature, actually uh, James Webb uh, takes the infrared input, right? So if the sensors and cameras of James Webb heats up, they will have its own infrared radiation which will distort our image, distort our data. So we put it at such low temperature. And uh, next thing is, how are we able to do that? So this uh, shield that you see, the part that is below the golden thing, that is the shield, sunscreen shield. So that shield is just a few centimeters thick. I think it's not that thick. But the temperature variation between the two is around 500 degrees Celsius or more. 
So that is the technology part that James Webb has done. And uh, I told you the temperature is so less because it wants to keep its parts uh, well enough. And uh, when, the uh, when the images started popping up, we got headlines like this, that actually the colors of James Webb are fake. And there you see Chodas are written over there okay, and that's okay. Well, obviously it was not taken in the visible spectrum. So we don't know the exact color of those things, right? We only know the infrared thing of it. So people just started calling it fake. Not really actually. Well, because it was taken in infrared, the images are mostly in grayscale. Like you will see, you must have downloaded that. When you open it in serial, you will see it's grayscale. It's in grayscale. And we color it. That doesn't mean that those objects are actually grayscale. It's just that we did not capture the visible range of it. They must be having colors for sure. We just did not capture the visible spectrum of that thing. We, because obviously visible is not that penetrative, it won't reach us. And uh, one more point was that planets do not have their own light, right? They reflect. And uh, there, there's dust, there's clouds, there are so many things. So that is why using infrared was a very good option that they did and uh, which is why we have seen such beautiful images. Now uh, JWST used six optical filters. These optical filters actually mean that only a certain type of wavelength will pass through these filters. Like say for example we used 470W filter. That means that only one particular type of wavelength is going to pass through that filter and only that wavelength we will capture. So like that it has captured six, uh, like it has taken in six filters. Now uh, let's talk about a portal called MAST, MAST portal, which is Mikulski Archive for Space Telescopes. This is the portal from where we have downloaded the James Webb images. And a little information about this portal is that it's a NASA funded portal and it is an archive for astronomical data where all the space telescopes ka data is present and uh, I, I will be showing that thing to you in just a second. So uh, please do this along with me, uh, go to the <coughs> Google and type mask portal. And open it, the site will be a little slow. Now in this portal you have images from James Webb, Hubble, TESS, Kepler, any kind of space telescope you have the, you have the images. Now in this we know that we are going to uh, search for JWST so let's go to advanced search. And in this uh, make sure this mission box right here is ticked because we will be entering the mission as JWST. And over here, it will search the records. You can see you found so many records, right? Mm -hmm. Then, uh, in the left hand column, you. Uh, everybody has uh, got into this page, right? Or if you can try this anonymously. Yeah, so uh, this is actually important. So, uh, anybody has been having some difficulties here? Maybe it's not. You can start from here, you can see I'm doing it again. Yeah, so in this click on advanced search, everybody. Right? And then in the left hand side, you have columns, right? Make sure the mission box is ticked. Okay? 
and in the filter section scroll down you'll find a mission karke box in that type jwst and enter jwst stands for And in the left hand side, because we know that we are going to download the images of Karina Nebula, which were released, we know the release date and all. So in the left hand side, you, uh, in the columns, you search for this release date and take that. And then in the filters, scroll down. Till you find the release date wala box, and then in that you can type the date dates which I will be typing now. With our research, we know that Karina Nebula's images were released at 3 p.m. on 13th of July. So we've typed these things over here. So that we get all the images. Now you can see the records has come down to 2325, right? Now over here in the left hand side you see a search option, right? Click on that. Now here you see three things, right? Left hand side you have filters. And in the middle you have all of these, uh, like these are the images basically with filters written on the side. And uh, this is the astro view which I'll be showing a while. And in the left hand side you see instruments. So uh, the James Webb had four instruments. And uh, the Karina Nebula's pictures were taken with uh, NIR cam, near infrared cam. So click on that. And uh, okay, we have mission over here. Right. Yeah, provenance name, instrument. Right. You actually put a filter data, right? You want to know which filter, uh, which filter you want to download. So we keep that filter column over here. This column. 
So we just untake the uh, mission, it was showing mission JWST, that was meaningless for us. What we want is filters and target name. The target name is the name of your uh, nebula, like NGC3324 is the name of Karina Nebula. So. In the edit column, I, I hope you've done this. These four things in the top need to be untinted. downloaded the images of Karina Nebula which we uh, circulated in the drive uh, and over here you see NGC3324. In this you have different kinds of filters written. We downloaded F335, F44 and F470. F470. Now uh, this is how you can download any image taken by space telescopes. Uh, and then in the right hand side you have Astro View. In that in the settings menu you can click there. And over here it's a fun activity. You can write something like say Orion Nebula. Click on Go. And this searches the image of Orion and shows it to us. It's something like Google Earth, but it stands for the whole universe. And then uh, you can type any celestial object like, uh, say for example, Karina Nebula itself. Uh, this is about the mass portal. Basically, uh, over here in the left hand side, you have some more filters. If you know what is the specific type of image you want to download, uh, you'll be knowing what filters to use and you can reach your image because it has a lot of data. We need to use some filters like we use here also.
like over here, you can see a uh, different filters, right? Like 187N, W, M, and all that. So, in this, you can see that. In this, I have circled few uh, wavelengths or filters basically. So, in that W over there stands for wide band, M in the below thing stands for mid band, and L stands for narrow band. It has a narrow band over here that has slightly wide band, and this one has like mid kind of a band. So, uh, and all of these are your cam filters and Nietzsche you can see wavelength also in microns. So all of these correspond to these wavelengths. All of these filters. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Ritwik. So as we see On the mass portal, so what we are focusing is on NGC 3324 because that is our Carina Nebula. Uh, we have six filters, but we are going to focus on three filters, which is which are F335M, uh, F44W, both of them. Okay. Um, so normally we would download the files from here, but uh, this site is very slow and it takes a lot of time. So we have we sent the files earlier in the in WhatsApp on the WhatsApp group. So does everyone have the files, or we can share the pen drive uh, with the files? Does anyone need the pen drive? Okay. Okay. So uh, I would recommend that of the three files you have downloaded, keep them in a separate folder so that you can access them easily. And now we'll move to Cyril, where we'll uh, process all the images that we download from here. Reduction and it's to improve the signal and noise ratio. So our astronomical images, they have data from, um, they take the signals from all the stars at different wavelengths. But there's also noise in the images which can be due to the sensors or also also there is also uh, there can be noise due to a long shutter time like uh, like if, if the instrument takes a lot of time between like, like when, when, while capturing the image you can have a lot of noise in between. So Cyril is good for those kind of processes to decrease the noise. So, um, all of you have all the files downloaded and you have kept them in one folder. Like, it will be easier for all of you if you keep them in one folder and you know the location of the folder. So, uh, so uh, the reason we are focusing on three filters is because Cyril is, uh, it's not, it's not very easy to use compared to the other softwares. It's weird. Uh, chosen Cyril because it's free and it's smaller in size so that we can use it in this workshop but if you really want to try image processing then I would recommend other uh, software such as Pixinsight and we'll, we'll share the, so, uh, the link for the software and also a video for Pixinsight where, which you can follow if, in case you want to. Okay. So, uh, keep in mind that when we are using three filters, this means that we are taking data from uh, three wavelengths. Like as Asta showed you, those... Um, so we are using 444W, 335M and 470M. 
and you can see that each uh, filter covers a certain wavelength in microns. So our image will have data coming from these wavelengths. And you might be thinking that if you use less filters, we are missing out on the data from, uh, like we are missing out on some data from different wavelengths, which is true. But uh, these, th these three filters have a lot of the data and it will look very close to the final image. So you don't need to worry that much, but it is true that we are missing out, uh, missing out on some of the data. Okay, so now we'll uh, be starting with Cyril and at any point if anyone is lagging behind, please raise your hand. Uh, all our, uh, the team will be ready to help. So now, now, um, so uh, you can see the blue button on the top left. So click on that. So um, I would recommend that you uh, open the folder which has the three images. Like my folder on the on my desktop has the three files. So I would recommend open that folder. <laughs> and make another folder within or from this function on the top right. You can name it whatever you want. I'm naming it process. And then you open this file. So basically we are setting a new working directory so that now all the images we process and we, all the work we do is contained within this working directory. So has everyone created a new folder? Has everyone created a new working directory? Huh. So basically, after you press, okay. once you press that uh, blue home button, open the folder which has your three images, right? The three fit files. Okay. And once you have opened that folder with the three fit files, from the top right, you can create a new folder within this as I've created process. And then uh, remember, you have to open process or whatever folder you've created, and then press open from the bottom right. So this is to set your working directory. So now, now all the images you save or all the um, like all the all the steps that we go through, everything that gets saved gets saved in this one folder. Is it fine now? Okay. Uh, one more thing I would like to add is once we download the images, uh, the files from the mask portal. They're actually downloaded downloaded as fix file, which is F I T S. So what we need to do is we uh, we need to change the extension. Like you can just like it's simple uh, simply renaming the file. You click on the uh, you rename it, and from the extension you remove F, from F I T S you change it to F I T because Cyril reads a fit file, like which is all which also shows one of the shortcomings of. Uh, like you wouldn't face this problem in other softwares. Okay. Okay. So now we need to load our three fit files into Cyril, but we we'll do them one by one. All right. So uh, Cyril has these few panels on the right, which show uh, some of the big processes or some of its prominent features. So you can always always press on console. Uh, console will always show you what process is going on in the software right now. In uh, in case you need to keep track. So we we'll start with conversion. So we need to load our. We'll we first load our 335M filter into Cyril. Okay. So is everyone with me? Yeah, is everyone with me right now? Sir, would you please repeat? Sir, would you please repeat? 
Okay, suppose you have just open Cyril. So, you see the button on the top left, the blue one. So, you press that. So once you open that, I want you to, like, you have, you can go through all of your, it, it's simply like uh, our Windows Explorer, like, you just open, I want you to open the folder with the three uh, fit files. Like, like, I have this folder on my desktop, JWST3, which has the three files, right? So I want you to open that file on Cyril. Once you do that, uh, from the function on the top right to create a new folder, you press that and you can name it anything. And create. So now you have opened a folder within your original folder. This is just to make everything uh, simpler, but we need to uh, make this new folder so that all our new images saved are saved in this file, in this folder. It's basically just making a separate folder for everything we do now. And we have just created this new folder within our original folder. Okay, click open. As you can see over here, uh, it's on my desktop, JWST3 process2, or whatever uh, is the name you have saved. Okay, so now everything that we save will go into this folder. Okay, our first step, we are going to load our 335M filter into Cyril, right? So, in the conversion panel, over here, click on the plus, the on this add files to convert. This would open um, your fo uh, folder, so you can go one step back, where you have the three files saved, and click on 335M. Uh, do you want me to repeat? Okay. Okay. So, in the conversion panel, now we want to add our filter, our image into Cyril. So, for that, under conversion, we add our file over here. Right? We can see the plus mark. Once you click on that, it will open the new folder that you created within your original folder. Right? From, so from, from this, uh, over here you can see the or original folder where your three files are saved. Alright? Okay, so over there you click on 335M and you add this file. Do you want to do that? Okay. So as you can see, it added your 335M fit file, FIT. It added your file into Cyril. Now we want to give it a name. I'll just name it as 335M. And on the right, make sure that it's converting into fits images. It has a few options. Uh, make sure it's converting into fits images. So basically, our fit file, we are opening it in Cyril and we are, create, uh, and we are converting into it into an image. So press on convert. Okay, did everyone convert the first filter? Any, anyone has a problem, raise your hand. Okay. So now, uh, I like you to press on open. Now we want to uh, open our filter into the software. See, as I told you, now that we have saved, uh, now that we sa uh, loaded our first filter into this, it uh, got saved into your process filter. So that makes everything simpler. So it loaded your first image into Cyril. Okay, you can click on it and press open. Okay, did everyone open the first filter? Mm, 
Officer, did everyone uh, do the conversion part? Okay, so what you would have to do is um, un between the three images we have is the filter. Ba filter is basically saying that they are of different wavelengths. Right? So we have three images and each one is a little different because they have captured data or the images or whatever light from three different wavelengths. The term we use is filters. Sir, would you please explain the, uh, why we use the 3G5 as the name of the filter? That is terminology. That's not okay. something we have, uh, you know, it's there on the mass portal. As you can see on the mass portal, they have given the name as F335M. So that's how that's the terminology. Okay. Huh. Okay. So uh, everyone must have uh, opened the first filter into Cyril, and it must be looking black, right? And you are wanting why it's completely blank. So, the image that we take, not only in space telescopes, in our normal cameras as well, the image taken has a certain size, it's of certain bits, but it's not, uh, that image is not what we directly see on our phones. Like, even if we take a photo on our phone or on, on our DSLR, it's not, uh, the, ima the image taken is not what we exactly see. There's always a little bit of processing after after which it's converted into an image that we see, where we can see the details. So this is basically called stretching. So stretching is basi uh, basically scaling of your data. So now this image that's taken, it's not uh, ready to be directly seen on our laptop. But once we stretch this image, which is basically scaling your image, we'll be able to see the features of the data. Right? So once uh, the first filter that we have on our screen, we are going to stretch it so that we can see the details. So click on image processing. So right now our, our aim is to process this image, right? Like the name is image processing, the entire software is for processing. So once you have loaded the first filter, you want to process it. So first step you are going to follow is um, stretching. To stretch, go into image processing and click on histogram transformation. Okay. Now stretching can be done manually, but all of that, there's a lot to learn in that and we are not so advanced in that. We are just going to use auto stretch, which will give this. Now you can see so much, like you can basically see everything, like most of the detail. So auto stretch, for auto stretch you have to click on this icon over here. Is anyone fine with that? and apply it. Yeah, make sure you click on apply and then you can close. So now this is our 335M filter. The image has been stretched so that you can see the details. Now it's appropriate for us to see on laptop screens. Okay? Is everyone with me? So now, uh, one more step in our image processing is background extraction. Let me show you. Again, we go into image processing. Please wait two minutes. I'm downloading the image. You're downloading. Okay, maybe you can follow along later. Like, I'll help you out with that. Basically, after uh, each, we are going to read the same process for each filter. So even if you miss out on one filter, you can see the steps for the next filter and repeat it for the other ones. So for, this is our first filter, 335M. Um, so first we stretch it. After that we go to background extraction. Click on it. Okay. So uh, basically in our filter it's taking images from a certain wavelength. But uh, the sickness or the light we are getting at this wavelength, the, the different parts of of the universe, they don't, they're not giving it with the same amplitude or same intensity. 
like some some of the uh, some of the signals can be lighter and like it can get lost in like over here as you can see the dark spots over here and it's dark on the top so um background extraction is basically to smoothen the data so that it's not like some part is bright and some part is dark because this is basically because of different amplitudes of the same wavelength but of different amplitudes so we want we want to smoothen the data and we do that through background extraction so make sure we press on add dither over here dither is basically it's basically adding white noise to areas with uh, low amplitude signals and that's why um, it that's how we'll smoothen the data so make sure you click on add dither and press on generate right so it's taking all the points from our image click on compute background it'll take a few seconds right we can see the difference and then click on apply so that the changes are saved i can show you the difference between the two uh, you can uh, see the difference by pressing on do this was our earlier image and this is our after background extraction that smoothen the data more than if the data is yeah, smoother than earlier okay now is everyone with me till here if anyone has a problem there is no yes uh, after we convert when in conversion you click on the plus the tick uh, plus mark then you load the file once you uh, click on the file you save a name make sure it's okay i'll continue with about i was doing okay so with the first filter we have come to stretching and image uh, background extraction these are this is this is no this is what the these are the two steps in our image processing yeah we are not uh, going to great detail and for for this filter or for any filter the, we are going to follow these two steps to process the image in this filter now what we are going to finally do is we need one final image for our nebula right but we have over here three different images but in reality six different filters six different images and each one has data of their wavelengths so now our final image needs information from all these filters so what our final goal is to overlap and align these three filters or six filters right so for that um, as you can see this image has some black spots on the top which which is not part of the image and it's not uh, perfectly aligned so we are going to uh, crop this image and we are going to take we are going to take most of the image so so but we are going to fix it at certain point so that we uh, each filter we take the same part of the image right so we we not going to use this black extra portion so we are going to crop the image most of it and we are going to make sure that all the three filters have the same uh, same area you understand it once i go um you can go from any point to any point but uh, i'm going to uh, do what i usually do you can see you can see these stars over here you can zoom in hey try right. zoom in into uh, the stars on the top left so i'm going to take this star right uh click from there and you can start this box right you can zoom out and drag it across the image right okay so we start uh, we started our uh, box from the top left from that star on the top left and we're going to place the other corner on this star okay i mean you can start from any point to anywhere but uh, it's helpful if you try if you uh, do the same thing for other filters so i am doing it in a way that i can remember 
Okay. I'll give you some time and once, if anyone has any problems, you can raise your hand. And I think repeat it over here as well.
Okay, so um, showing the drop wala part. Zoom it into the top left. Ye stars dikh rahe These stars, I'm talking about these ones. So we'll start from these stars, zoom out, and let me show you with stars again. Over here. Either say we'll crawl. Zoom out, zoom out. Take it across. And then you can zoom in over here to make it precise. Right? So once you have made, uh, uh, made this outline, uh, right click on it and crop. No, 
ठीक है इज एवरी वन विथ मी मेनी पीपल आर लाइन बिहाइन देन आई कैन डू बीट नो वन हैज प्रॉब्लम दिस एरिया एनी प्रॉब्लम एनी प्रॉब्लम इन द बैक ओवर और ओके ठीक है ओके वी गोइंग टू सेव दिस एज अ न्यू इमेज राइट नाम दे दो क्रॉप और वॉट एवर यू लाइक बट मेक श्योर यू नो दैट इज अ क्रॉप फाइल राइट वी गोट वी गोट यूज ओनली द क्रॉप फाइल्स आफ्टर दिस मेक श्योर देर यू रिमेम दिन विच ऑन द क्रॉप I mean, you can obviously see the size difference between the two. Okay, say thirty-two uh, bit floating point and embedded data. Okay, yes. so now we're done with two filters. Now third filter, exact same process, but we're, because the third filter is different in size, you'll see different in the filter, uh, difference in the filters. Okay, go back to the conversion panel, remove the four seventy and one filter. And add, add. Me, you will go back to jump images where you have uh, low uh, CSV images. Choose 444W, the one in the middle, right? It's different in size. Like you can see, uh, earlier two filters, almost same in size. 826, 826 MB. This one is different. It's smaller in size. Okay, we'll add this. Give the new name. Um, save as fits images and convert. Right. So now it made a new image. Uh, yeah, it saved over here. Four 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 W dot fit. Okay. Open our third filter. Type again. It's black. So first we are going to stretch it. histogram transformation and uske andar auto stretch apply okay uh, this one is uh, we need to apply a vertical mirror well we want it to be the same as earlier wale so on the bottom right you can see oh, sorry horizontal mirror, mirror over here on the bottom right theek hai flip uh, flip kar dena because uh, The image is loaded upside down. Okay. Um, in the same process, we have stretched it. After stretching it, go to background extraction. Make sure add data is there. Generate. Click on generate. Compute background. Take a few seconds, and then apply. ठीक है, you can see difference. <coughs> Data smooth in here. Okay, then now again we crop and keep it as similar as we can, but it's fine if you if it's not exactly similar. Keeping them similar only it helps us in aligning them later. So that's the only thing. Uh, let me show these images. Right on the top left. Domain. So you start the outline and graphic. See it. Right, we made the outline. Right click and crop. Now comes the main part of 
aligning and overlapping these filters. So in Cyril, this is called, uh, we, we go into image processing and we go to this new function, RGB compositing. So now we are making a composite of these three filters and making into one image. Right? You click on it. Uh, first, press uh, clear over here. Okay, so that uh, previously the data that was open, we clear it. Okay, did everyone open RGB compositing? Okay. Right. So, like you can look at it. It says multi-layer image composition. So we are, if you think about it in terms of like Photoshop, it's like adding three different layers and you know we overlap them to get our fi uh, image, right? So it's kind of like that. But over here, um, Cyril may, uh, when we load these files, we are also giving them a color. That's it. Right, so we look, so uh, we have taken three filters to give three colors, RGB. So Cyril is, I told you it's free and open source, like we've taken this for the workshop, but it's not very really advanced in the coloring part of the process. So for now, we are focusing we are going to use the three filters for the three colors, R, G, and B. So that will give you more, a uh, lot of, I mean, those are the basic colors, right? So R, G, and B, and we are going to uh, give three filters, the three colors. So when we use, like, we can give the three filters different colors, but uh, it's, we assign them the colors in the way it looks most, like, most satisfying to us. Originally, there is no color in the filter, right? So whatever color we uh, supposed to write, I give certain, 335M wala filter. So, 335M and then 470 I'll give green and then 440W I'll give blue. So, baad I'll create a certain composite with those filters with, and the corresponding colors. If I change the filter and give it a different color, our final image ka color will change. So, we'll assign colors in such a way that it's um, like as close to the real photo that we have. Alright? Um, the three photos that we have saved, they are of different sizes. So, um, in Cyril, the process in Cyril is that jo, the, the fit image with the largest size, you have to load that first. Right? So, I'm going to, we don't need to uh, uh, load anything for the luminescence part. Start with the color part. So, we'll open this. Right? So, we have to look between our crop color parts, these three crop, crop color parts. Now, which one is the largest in size? This one, right? So, it, it, it can vary in uh, everyone's uh, software. So, now this part, the basically processing part is common for everyone, but the color part is very personalized. Like, you can... Wait, just go flip. Bottom right. Bottom right, there was a... Okay. For how many people that did not uh, flip? Like the original photo was flipped, then you had to apply horizontal mirror to make it right. So... It's not active, the option is not active. Okay. So, your count is here. working, you can go into image processing, over there there is geometry. Yeah, under geometry also there is horizontal mirror. So in case it's not working from the bottom right, you can use this.
So, but that's in a tool ki in case uh, some layer is brighter than needed, it adjusts. Like the color is too bright, it adjusts the layer brightness. You can click on that. So, in this, what you have done is we have taken the filters, assigned them the colors, kept the largest one at the top, we have aligned them and adjusted the layer brightness. Is everyone done with that? Did everyone align and put the filters with the correct colors? Align wala, if you go into the green channel, green channel ke baad arbitrary kind se koi bhi box dal do, like make an arbitrary box. Then over here, you I think automatically it will be in one star registration, make sure it's in image pattern alignment. And once it's in image pattern alignment, press align. See, it's done with, and in the console it will show registration finished. Okay, so we have our three filters and all of it's aligned. And a big, pura, tedious part, khatam. So, now comes our result. So this is, this is the result that we get from, um, uh, we have taken the three filters and overlapped them and we have uh, put them according to the colors. So this is the result we get in Cyril. Alright, and the reason, uh, uh, also remember that we have taken three filters and only three colors. So some of the data is missing out and also um, it's majority in green, blue and red only. You don't see that much detail. And that's the thing with Cyril, it's not a very advanced software in the coloring wala part. So in Cyril, we're only going to go to this extent and we'll get this result. So this was basically all we're going to do on Cyril. We took the three filters, processed them and aligned them and put an appropriate color to get this image. Now Cyril does have a few options in the coloring wala part. Uh, Vishwas is going to take over and he'll do the coloring. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Vishwas. Uh, this is Cyril. Uh, basically, uh, we have group. Composite file ready, so download it. Now, it's not like this. It's not like this. Now, it's not like this. 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 Green noise is up here. We have three filters here. So, this is the same thing. But if we have six filters, we have six filters. So, we have a different color lighting. We have a different color lighting. So, 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 we have a different color lighting. And then apply. You all see this image, and after this, remove the noise. Yeah. 
you see uh, there are वाले पार्ट में जो सिरिल है इसमें इतनी कलर एडेंस होंगे और तुम कर सकते हो अपने अकॉर्डिंगली देन वी चेंज टू अनदर एप्लीकेशन लाइट रूम प्लीज ओपन लाइट रूम आफ्टर वी हैव डन विद दिस लाइक according to your satisfaction um, how much ever color you want to change over here after that you can use this like we basically now we want to uh, save it as a png serial gives you the option to save this image directly as a png so from the top right from the uh, camera icon you can click on save as unique file so now in process 2 in your folder your directory it has saved the png format of this file so if you want to use uh, So if you have created on your laptop, you can after you save that PNG file, you can open that on Lightroom. Or if you uh, want to go along with ours, we have shared our image on to uh, the WhatsApp uh, group. You can download the file from there as well. So the part after this is on Lightroom, and uh, you can either use the one on the WhatsApp group or the one on your laptop using the top right feature. Please open the Lightroom. Thing you're gonna 
something that they thought that that was the uh, best image that the user would want to see. But maybe you want this kind of an image uh, more. So these are all the things that you can like uh, even peer through the uh, gases and uh, see the uh, kind of uh, the white glow over there. So. So that was one thing that you uh, take away from this workshop that uh, there, <coughs> with the data that you process from your own, you can uh, fine tune it to whatever you like and not only rely on NASA and what it, it processes for us. So that is one thing. The other thing that you have learned is about the mass portal. So now you know that uh, NASA is not like these space missions are not only for a specific country or a specific research agency. It's for everybody. It's an open source thing. So now you know that, uh, so the data, we were looking for an image data, but there are also scientific data's, uh, data on the mass portal. So for somebody who wants to do a scientific, more uh, rigorous sort of, uh, sort of like process on the data, they can also perform that using the mass portal. So we learned how to use the mass portal. And then uh, there is also the thing that uh, we learned about James Webb and how it is better and why we have spent so much money about on James Webb to develop it and to send it to the skies. One interesting uh, question I would like to say is, uh, so James Webb, uh, they say that James Webb uh, is uh, of the size of a telescope, right? So how do you think it got into space? Like rockets aren't that big. Yeah. So they had such a such a great system of origami as to fold the James Webb telescope. So that was really great. And then, uh, so the mirrors. Uh, if you think about the mirrors, do you think uh, they can achieve such precision just by being there, like with such vibrations of the rocket? Do you, don't you think it would uh, get off axis and tilt? So how do you think uh, they managed to achieve those precise calibrations of the mirrors? Like the camera and the mirror should be in, in the straight line, right? So how do you think they managed that? Yeah, so actually they they made a six uh, pod system. So you you must have uh, like found it on YouTube or something. There's this six leg robot that stays upright, however you push it. So they made a system for that using. Uh, and the interesting part was they only used one motor for that entire rig, and they were able to control with that one motor. So it's really interesting, and all the engineering that has gone into James Webb. So yeah, these are all the things that we have learned from here. I would really appreciate you guys uh, trying out the mass portal for yourself. So yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Do <laughs> uh, post your photos, final photos on the WhatsApp group. We'll feature them in our uh, on our magazine and also on the Instagram page. Thanks.